Well, I'm here with Dina Wakely, and we are talking about one of my favorite painters, Van Gogh. Now, he's, I mean, his work is amazing, and when you ever get, have the opportunity to get really close to his work, it's the brush strokes, right? It's the brush strokes. When I went to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, I started crying. My children had wow. to leave because they were embarrassed. <laughs> but it's the power of the brush stroke the, to really see them up close, that you can convey emotion with a single brush stroke. And that's what I aspire to be able to do, and that's why I love him. So now you have promised or guaranteed me that we're going to learn just a little bit of how to master some of Van Gogh's brushstroke. Or at least have fun while you're trying to master. There you go. Because he is the master for sure. But to definitely be inspired by his brushstroke and let the brushstroke do the work for you. And what I mean about that is to not try to make it everything so literal. So we're gonna do abstract flowers, kind of a la Van Gogh. If you think about his sunflowers and just all those great marks that, that represent petals, we wanna channel that idea. And so what I like to do is I have a piece of watercolor paper here. I have painted it solid fuchsia. Choose any bright color. I know it seems counterintuitive, and people that know me know I like my white space, but start with one big bright color all, all over, red, uh, purple, something bold. Okay, okay. this is exciting to me because we're so used to starting with a blank white piece of paper, and this is definitely something you can do, paint a bunch of papers mm -hmm. while you're watching TV and you don't know what you wanna make. Or take pages that you hate, paper paintings that didn't work and do this over Oh, I've, I've got a few of those. <laughs> I have mountains of those, drawers <laughs> full of those. So I want to channel Van Gogh and I want my brush stroke to be the petal. So I'm gonna choose a, a color here. I'm choosing a cheddary orangey color. Now you might think, well, I can't paint flowers. I'm not a botanical painter. Guess what? Neither am I. To abstract something means to remove detail. So what I want to make sure that I do is I don't want to add tons and tons of detail. What I want to do is give the impression of a petal, the idea that a petal is there, almost like a pressed flower. Right. So you took a flower and you squished it into the dictionary or something like that. Now, I noticed you're using like a brush that's sort of flat, that's exact size of the petals that you want, which I assume is important that each petal is one stroke. Each petal's one stroke, and what you need to avoid doing is, is licking, <laughs> meaning <laughs> that you go over it and over it and over oh, it. Oh, I thought you meant because the color was so yummy that you'd yeah. be like, ooh, I wanna ooh, lick that. I want grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> no. If you go over and over the petal, you're gonna lose that delicious brush stroke. You okay. lose the, the marks of the bristles in the paint. So this is about not stressing, about just aggressively going one stroke and being okay with whatever happens. Right, and the quicker you go, in fact, set a timer maybe, so that you uh, don't get caught up in making it perfect, um, I think is a really good idea. You want the idea, almost like if you could squint at, at a flower garden, the, what you can see from squinting is great. So and I, one of the things I'm noticing here is that you, you have a lot of impasto paint, which is another hallmark of Van Van Gogh's work, which just means sort of thick paint showing. Visual texture, texture that you could feel if they let you touch that painting in the museum, which they don't, by the way. <laughs> don't they try, will whistle don't try. You. Yeah, leave those, leave the bumps and the lumps. You want those to be there to be truly Van Gogh. I'm gonna wipe the brush off on the rag. I'm gonna pick up a lighter color, and instead of licking over the petal and making it go over and over. You know, I just realized we don't have any water on this table. You, you are not rinsing your brush out at any point. You are just wiping it off on a paper towel and just going with what happens. And why do you think I want you to do that? Uh, to be okay <laughs> with the dirtiness of it, yeah. to embrace the fact that like you don't have watery paint, you have nice thick impasto paint. It does maintain the integrity of the you know, viscosity of the paint. I want it to stay in pasto. And I'm too ADD to keep changing my brush. <laughs> and I want um, the colors to mix a little bit as I go. Cool. So in a sense, they're mixing on the brush. Now I notice you have a long handled brush, but you're very choked up on the front of the brush and holding it almost like a pencil. Is that something that helps with these kinds of strokes? No, in fact, if you really want to force yourself to be Van Gogh, you should probably hold it at the end. That's Ooh, why I like, scary. I know, I like, I like a brush with a long handle because you can have the best of both worlds. If you need to hold it tight, you can. Uh, the, the further on the end that you hold your brush though, guess what happens? The, the less loose, control. Yeah, the looser you get. So notice I put a lighter yellow and then white, but did the white end up looking white? Well, not really, because I didn't clean my brush. And also, because the paint is wet, so it's blending in with what's already there. I mean, Van Gogh was working in oil a lot of time, and oils have a very long open time, meaning they stay wet for a very long time. And even though we're using acrylic, if we work quickly, we can get some of that look. 
Exactly. In fact, they say some of his paintings are still wet under there. Um, are you adding black no. on top of it? No. So here? I'm adding umber. This is an umber, kind of a brownie color. So notice that every time I've added a petal, I, I add a smaller footprint. Oh, the, so the, same brush, but are you, you're using it at an angle in order to get that smaller bit, yeah? Yeah, so the, the, the first it takes up a big footprint, and then the next layer is smaller and smaller as you go. So by the time you get to the dark, the shadow petal, you just have a little bit. You're not going to make giant shadow petals in the same way um, that you started with that orange paint at the beginning. Okay. Cool. Now leaves are easy, so I'm going to wipe the Sends brush you. off. <laughs> Look, a brush stroke is a leaf. A brush stroke, a stem. You okay. really do make it look so easy. And I think sometimes when we're at home doing it ourselves, it gets harder because you get critical. You get critical and you, you care about it being good. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're Dina, uh, I don't care about it being good. It's just so much better than doing laundry. And again, in Van Gogh style, you want the idea of the flower, not a literal representation. So after I get a few uh, brush strokes down there to represent that, uh, the, the petals and the flowers and the stems and the leaves, I fill in around. And as I fill in around with white. I see you're being very precise and careful yeah, here. Yeah, super careful. I should make you close your eyes and do it. <laughs> be, a, be truly a mean about that. But I, I get close, but not all the way because then that great underpainting. You're getting that wonderful red shadow. I can see that. And, and it, actually it, it's, it's amazing. Oh wait, you're blending in some blue. So a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of blue for kicks to make it a little less static. Because if we look now at your finished ones here on these cards, I can see that that red is showing through, which I thought was a paint layer you added. It's funny that it's the background and even the larger ones over there in your art journal, I can see that one that you're hand is on, of course, there's the red in the background. Yeah, there's the red in the background. And I love that technique because it's forgiving. It, it hides mistakes. And then you can see it coming through. It gives another visual dimension. And it's not hard. For me, art's supposed to be easy and fun. If it's so hard, why do it? And well, this you, is easy. You made this so easy. I love that you've broken down Van Gogh's brush strokes for us. Thank you.